This week on Premier Preps, we've got NorCal playoff coverage for both basketball and soccer as teams march toward a state championship. We've also got our first glimpses of spring baseball on the diamond. We'll also be joined by a special guest, Ella Skinars of the Sac Joaquin section champion Vista Del Lago Eagles. You are watching Premier Preps. Welcome to Premier Preps. I am your host, Nick Pecorero. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. If you're tuning in for the first time, thank you. And if you like what you see, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel. We've got great things planned for the shows and weeks ahead. But we're going to start this week on the basketball court. Once again, we are in the NorCal playoffs where the Sacramento High School Dragons were breathing fire after winning back-to-back -back Sac Joaquin section championships last week at Golden One Center. And they drew a three seed in the NorCal bracket, but they would have to get past a tough 14th seed in Menlo Atherton, that game happening Tuesday night. Fresh off their second straight Sac Joaquin section title, the Sac High Dragons looking to take down Menlo Atherton, the Central Coast D1 runner-up. Here we go. Sir Marius Jones gets off to a hot start with 10 first quarter points, but just wait till you see how he finished on Tuesday. Then Shabal Barksdale getting in on the fun. He had his caramel frappuccino on point on Tuesday. A hot start for Sac High, but the Bears didn't flinch. Trevor Cadigan ties things up at 16 at the end of the first. More Cadigan to start the second. This bucket gives Menlo Atherton its first lead, but the Dragons answer right back as Barksdale gets the put back. Extra caramel, please. Shabal finished with 14 points and 12 rebounds. And how about some defense turning into offense now? Labradian Keyword with the strip, and he feeds Damarion Taylor for the dip. Taylor had 12 points on Tuesday, but again, the Bears were never rattled. Sophomore Jacob Sutton buries a triple, and on the next trip down, Jerry Williams connects from the same spot, and Menlo Atherton leads by four at the break. In the third, Sir Marius Jones with another big jam to give Sack High an early boost, but the Bears start to come out of hibernation as Justin Moore follows his own miss and gets the and one putback. And then Moore working the give and go this time with Cadigan, beautifully executed. And then Cadigan again, the sidestep for three. Cadigan had 15 on Tuesday, and the Bears lead by 15 after three. The lead continues to balloon for Menlo. Jack Anderson led his team with 16, and he puts the Bears up by 19 with five and a half to go. But all of a sudden, here comes Sir Marius Jones. I told you he was gonna have a crazy finish. The up and under with some English. And then he steps into a three. And then here he is on the attack with the and one finish. And the Dragons have some life. And then off the steal from Taylor, Jones is gonna take it all the way to the cup. Jones scored 16 points in the fourth, including 14 straight to bring Sack Hyde back. Taylor cleans up an offensive miss and the deficit is down to just four with under a minute to play. But the unflappable Bears from Menlo Atherton knocked down clutch free throws to seal the deal. A tremendous game from Sir Marius Jones, 32 points in defeat. But 14th seeded Menlo Atherton slays the third seeded Dragons and advances to the NorCal quarters. Well, congratulations to Menlo Atherton for surviving that late scare from the Dragons. A tough way for Sack High to go out, but again, congratulations to the Sack High Dragons and Coach Sid Duplessis and company for going back to back in the Sack Joaquin section tournament. Let's take a look at the rest of the NorCal brackets on the boys' side and see who's left standing as we finish this final week of the basketball season. 
We've already reached the final four in the state championship brackets. We'll start with the open division where the state final four is set. This is the cream of the crop in California and it will feature the top two seeds in Salesian and Reardon. What a NorCal final that will be. The top two Southern seeds are still alive as well. Harvard Westlake will take on Roosevelt the championship game will be held Saturday at 8 p.m. at Golden One Center. The D1 boys bracket has whittled down to fourth-seeded Granada and second-seeded San Ramon Valley. The winners of Tuesday's game will square off in the main event Friday at Golden One Center with the winner of St. John Bosco and Modern D from SoCal. In D2, how about Oakland and Oakland Tech meeting in the NorCal Finals for the second straight year Last year, it was the Wildcats who went on to become the D3 champions. And hats off to Del Oro for an incredible season on the hardwood. To Division Three, the top-seeded Santa Cruz Cardinals looking for their first state title since 2005, while the Bullard Knights of Fresno look to make school history as a sixth seed. In D4, the 14th-seeded Monterey Toradors knocked out number two Natomas this team has become road warriors in the NorCal bracket. They'll take on the last remaining team from the Sac Joaquin section, the Union Mine Diamondbacks, Tuesday night in the Snake Pit. Down to D5 now, top-seeded Athenian of Danville will take on second-seeded San Domenico, looking to get back to the state final for the second time in three years. And the championship game is set in Division VI. Keep in mind, there are no state championship games at the D6 level, so this coming Tuesday night's winner will be crowned champion of Northern California. It features the D6 North Coast champion, Cornerstone Christian of Antioch, hosting sixth-seeded Napa Christian for the whole salami sandwich. You can visit the CIF state link in the description section of this video for full regional and state championship brackets and schedules for this coming week. Well, speaking of regional action, this past week was the final week for boys and girls soccer. NorCal action opened up on Tuesday and culminated on Saturday with championship games. We're going to start with a Tuesday night opener. The top-seeded St. Francis Troubadours, fresh off of their record 15th Sac Joaquin section championship, hosted 8-seeded Casa Grande of Petaluma. First round action in the D2 girls NorCal playoffs being played at American River College on Tuesday. St. Francis hosting Casa Grande of Petaluma. In the first half, some action for both goalkeepers. The Gauchos are on the attack, but Troubadour goalie Angelina Delaney able to pounce on it and come away unscathed. Down on the other end, Caitlin Haffenstein sends a cross, and it goes off a Casa Grande player nearly into the net. But luckily for the Gauchos, Abby Harvey was there to prevent some friendly fire. Haffenstein going to try to turn and burn herself this time, but her shot is high, and it remains nil-nil until the final minute of the first half when Yasmin Azar absolutely hits the bullseye with this shot from way downtown, and the Trubies take a 1-0 lead into halftime. Azar wasn't finished in this game though. Mia Barsati with a beautiful step over and feed to Azar for goal number two on the night with just over 30 minutes to go. Casa Grande trying to respond. Bailey Guerrero with some fancy footwork, but the shot attempt is snared by Delaney, one of five saves on the night for the senior. Couple of chances here for the Trubies. Jada Dwyer gets the steal, crosses it over to Barsati who clangs it off the right post. Dwyer tries to recover, but Casa Grande draws the foul and keeps it at a two-point game. That was until the 56th minute. Barsati gives it up to Yasmin Azar. A little crisscross applesauce for the hat trick. That's why she was the Delta League MVP. The Trubies added one more goal for good measure and advanced to the NorCal semis. Well, what a performance by Yasmin Azar, the Delta League Player of the Year. That was the first career playoff hat trick for the Coastal Carolina commit. Let's take a look at the rest of the playoff brackets in the NorCal region. 
In D1, fourth seeded Midi dashed the dreams of Del Oro in Loomis Saturday, scoreless after regulation, but a 5-3 shootout win for the Monarchs to win their first NorCal title. Over to D2, the Trubies did indeed go on to capture that second NorCal crown, and once again, Yasmin Azar came up big with the only goal of the game. Congratulations to St. Francis. The D3 winner is University of San Francisco. The Red Devils held off the Sac Joaquin section D3 champion Rio Americano with a 3-2 shootout for its first NorCal title in school history. Hoisting the Division Four plaque is Marin Catholic of Kentfield. They lost in the North Coast D4 final, but they bring home the NorCal championship, beating Everett Alvarez 2-1. And finally, the D5, where the Sac Joaquin section champion Hilmar Yellow Jackets were tied one apiece with Winters, but the Warriors outlast Hilmar in PKs 5-4 to complete the Northern section and Northern California championship sweep. Now to the boys' side, the Division I championship was brought home by the Midi Monarchs, who follow suit with the Lady Monarchs to bring home a NorCal sweep on the pitch defeating St. Francis in a D1 Central Coast Finals rematch. Doherty Valley beat Del Oro on Thursday, but the Wildcats were overcome by the Burlingame Panthers on Saturday, 2-1 in the D2 final. The D3 winner is Newark Memorial, whose only loss this season came in the NCS D2 final. The Cougars finished strong, though, claiming their first regional soccer crown. Archie Williams scored 10 goals over its first two NorCal games, but King City successfully defends its NorCal crown by shutting out the Pellegrine Falcons 2-0. The Mustangs finish with a streak of 11 straight games without a loss. And finally, the D5, where the Washington Eagles of San Francisco took down the Stevenson Pirates of Pebble Beach. Congratulations to all NorCal champions. We'll see you on the pitch again next year. Well, every now and then, a special player comes around to completely elevate a program to new heights. And my next guest is a prime example of that. Ella Skinars of Vista Del Lago High School in Folsom is just a junior, but she's already the school's all-time leading scorer, and she just helped Vista to the school's first ever Sac Joaquin Section Basketball Championship. So it was a no-brainer to invite Ella to come on the show and chat with us for a little bit. Check it out. Brooks inside of Skinner. Skinner spins inside. She gets it to go. It was only a matter of time before Ella started to get going. Three for Skinner's on the way. Gets it to go. The Vista Del Lago Lady Eagles are going to be your Division Three section champions. All right. We are incredibly lucky to be joined today by this next guest. I'm happy to say she's our first guest in the history of Premier Preps. So from Vista Del Lago High School, fresh off of the program's first ever SAC Joaquin section championship last Wednesday at Golden One Center. She's her school's all-time leading scorer already, and she's still just a junior. I'm excited to welcome Ella Skinars. Ella, thank you so much for hopping on with us tonight. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's been a special season for you guys, obviously, um, you know, especially last Wednesday at, at Golden One Center. It was a special day for you, your team, and your school as a whole. You guys had the very first game of the day uh, at 10 a.m. It was on a school night or a school school day, school morning. Yep. Uh, and you get to go and play in an NBA arena. Like, can you kind of take me through like the preparation that went into that? Any adjustments that you had to make going into that? And, and what was that whole day like? So pulling a, an early game and we just had to get like lots of sleep. So I made sure to go to bed early and then we had to get to our school at, uh, at seven because they were like setting us off with this like little ceremony because it's it was the first time the girls ever got to play or really the girls and boys for both basketball to play at the Golden One Center. So it was really special that everyone at school came out to support Honestly, at 10 a.m., it wasn't the worst. We actually played, had a lot of energy. I think we were all just excited to be, like, being able to play at, like, the Golden One Center. Like, we were all, like, in awe because we're like, oh, my gosh, we're playing where, like, the NBA players play and stuff. So we thought it was cool. We did it, and we took every moment in. 
you finished with 24 and, and nine, I believe. I remember you starting off kind of slow, you know, by your standards, obviously, uh, but you finished the game really, really strong. What adjustments did you feel like you had to make on the court? And w- was there a point in the game where you started to feel like, all right, I'm comfortable now? So I throughout the game, I just wanted to make the right plays, you know, because this is uh, to win the section title. So it's like if I needed to make the assist or if I needed to make that extra pass, I would do it because it's not all about scoring. So it's just all about like making the right uh, play. So and having fun with our teammates and getting this win. So but when the shots were there for me, I would take them and I would definitely uh, seize the opportunities. And, and I was trying my best, trying to get to the basket, draw the fouls and just put the ball in the basket. Yeah, you guys obviously seem to you you have such a high basketball IQ. You seem to always be able to make the right play in the right moment and never really try to force the issue and just kind of let the game come to you. Um, and, and your team, your teammates played phenomenally around you. Can you talk mm-hmm. a little bit about some of the contributions from some of your teammates and how that helped you guys win that title? Everyone, our team contributed to this game, like even with like little minutes or big minutes just like the energy everywhere but I know like with certain players we had like like Callie had a really good game I know she's been mentioned a lot with her 16 points and her rebounds which were huge for like our confidence but also other players like Kelsey Bella and Cece they had really good looks throughout the whole entire game with like assists and energy and the right plays and then even all the players like on the bench too like their energy was huge because I know like sometimes like especially with the court because the lighting was different and we weren't really totally used to it. Like having them being there, like encouraging us to saying like they know we could do it and that they trust in us and we trust in them. It just helped build our confidence being able to play our game, how we know we can play. Back out to Skinars for another three from the corner. This time she got it to go. Ella Skinars, 24 points in the section championship. When did it really sink in that your team had just accomplished something that no other girls basketball team had done in Vista history. Well, towards the end of the fourth quarter, like when they were like subbing me out and everyone was like clapping and stuff and everyone was like celebrating on the bench, like with the high fives, it felt really cool and special because we were like already like celebrating a little bit like, oh my gosh, we just did this. We just like did something that we're a part of history in this school. So it was a really big moment. Everybody was filled with smiles. And it's just, it's like a dream. Like, I'm still like, like, it's like, it's still crazy to me that we just did that. Four seconds to shoot. Skinars floats. Good. A beautiful lefty floater by Ella Skinars. And that's 999 points in the career of Skinars. A steal. Skinars lays it up and in. And there's a thousand. The sophomore, over a thousand points in her career, Ella Skinars. Well, speaking of making history, I mean, you you became the school's all-time leading scorer for the girls' side uh, just this year, uh, uh, close to 1,700 points and counting, um, at 21.4 this year, and and 8.3 rebounds. You're you're about what five nine, five ten maybe from uh, from from the yeah. guard position. And, five and nine. Up those kind of rebound numbers. That's really impressive. Um, what, what, how did you become such a, a, a great scorer and, and what goes into the development of your game? Well, like the, uh, like this, the work behind the scenes, like training every day, putting up shots, running, lifting, you know, getting into the gym as much as possible. I try to work on my game as much as possible. Even like after practice, I stay and shoot around sometimes. I talk with my teammates. I go to the gym with them. We, I make sure that. You know, as a team, we have good chemistry with each other, so we know we can trust with each other. And then, like, even with, like, my trainers, I just put in the work, and it helps build my confidence to, like, know that I can be able to score. And then I feel I really try to focus on my motor throughout the game. So, like, the hustle plays, like you were saying, with, like, the rebounding. Because then that also gives our team, like, second chance opportunities or gives our team, like, the possession. So I know it will overall, overall like, help our team win. What would it mean to you to, to one day – be able to bring a state championship home to Vista del Lago. Honest, it that would be insane for us because we've struggled to get past like the first round in states because we've been like bumped up to like the higher divisions. So if we could bring home a state win, I it would be even crazier than the golden one. I feel that's like huge. I can't even like put into words really like how much that would mean to us. It'd just be 
it'd be so cool. It'd be so fun. Ella, is there anything else that you want to tell us about, about what to expect from Vista Del Lago this year or next year for your, your senior year? I would just say, keep an eye out on us. Just watch us. You know, we're pretty good, you know, <laughs> winning the championships. <laughs> well, folks, if you don't know, it's S-K-R-Z-Y-N-I-A-R-Z. Write that down. You're going to be hearing a lot about this young lady for the rest of this school year and for her senior year next year. She's already a phenomenal player, a lot to look forward to. And if you already follow her on social media, you might notice that she updated her profile to say Sac Joaquin section champion. Well-deserved. Ella, congratulations on all your success. Thank you again for joining us. You're welcome back anytime. Uh, congratulations again on your success and good luck the rest of uh, NorCal's. Thank you so much. Well, Vista Del Lago is certainly in good hands for at least one more year with Ella around. I would sincerely like to thank Ella Skinars for joining us here on Premier Preps. She did a great job. If you want to follow her on social media, here is where to do so. She's great about posting updates on her basketball career, one that we will surely follow for years to come. Well, Vista had a tough draw in the first round of NorCal's, losing to Pleasant Valley on the road. Here's what the rest of the NorCal girls brackets look like as we stand. In Division I, 16th seeded McClatchy made an impressive run to the NorCal semis, but Carondelet is the midnight stroke of the Lions' Cinderella story, and Bishop O'Dowd gets past Oak Ridge on the other side. So who's left in that D2 bracket? The only girls team from the Sac Joaquin section, Colfax defeated Maria Carrillo Saturday to reach its third NorCal final since 2020. The Falcons will travel to Chico on Tuesday to play Pleasant Valley for a shot to play at Golden One Center again on Saturday. Over to D3, the University Red Devils trying to match the school's soccer energy They'll take on Carruthers, who's in the NorCal title game for the second straight year after beating defending state champ Central of Fresno. In Division IV, second-seeded Arcata awaits to see its Tuesday night opponent as the semifinal between St. Bernard and Foothill of Palo Cedro was pushed to Monday night. To D5 now, the ninth-seeded Woodland Christians NorCal run ends at the hands of Oakland the 13th seeded Wildcats try to keep that road energy going at Crystal Springs Uplands of Hillsboro on Tuesday night. And in the Division VI championship game, no state finals in D6, so Tuesday is for all the marbles. It'll be Weed, a NorCal finalist from a year ago, hosting Fall River in Siskiyou County. And in the big girl bracket, the top two seeds, Archbishop Mitty and Clovis West, will battle on Tuesday night in a rematch from last year's semifinals for a spot in the state championship game Saturday at 6 p.m. at Golden One Center. Premier Preps will make sure to report on all state championship results in next week's show. Well, the spring season is officially upon us, and that means that baseball and softball is finally being played across the Sac Joaquin section. And the first game we thought we'd check out for Premier Preps is a matchup between two teams who have met in the past two Sac Joaquin section championship games, the two-time defending Granite Bay Grizzlies hosting Rio Americano on Wednesday. A beautiful day for some baseball Wednesday afternoon at Granite Bay High School, the Grizzlies hosting Rio Americano. We pick it up in the bottom of the first, GB already with a 3-1 lead when Ben Kreisenbeck strokes an opposite field double That'll score Ben Straw from second base, and the Grizzlies are up 4-1, to one, but they weren't done in the first. Even when Rio pitcher Kyler Benton got the strikeout he needed, the errant throw on the dropped third strike allows Kreisenbeck to score, and the Grizzlies erupt for seven runs in the first inning. Granite Bay pitcher Aiden Riccardi was strong in his only inning of work, getting a pair of punch outs and getting his teammates back into the dugout and back to work goes Granite Bay at the plate. Brady Roach dumps a single into shallow right center, but the bobble in the outfield allows Chase Bentley to score from second, and GB just keeps piling it on, and it's 8-1 to one after two innings. 
Raiders trying to muster up some offense, and this will be a guy they can look to this season, Sammy Marr. Last year's Capital Athletic League Offensive Player of the Year picking up where he left off with a double, but he would be stranded on second after GB right fielder Brady Roach robs Kyler Benton of a hit. Roach doing a little bit of everything for the Grizzlies on Wednesday, but Rio's flashing some leather as well. Left fielder Adam Smith tells Jimmy Radler, I got nothing but glove for you. A nice defensive play from the Raiders, but they are in need of some runs. Meanwhile, Granite Bay had plenty of those to go around. Chase Bentley at the dish now, the big fella with the gapper to left center. It's a double for the Texas A&M commit, and he's going to come home for the third time on Wednesday on another RBI single from Brady Roach. Have a day, Brady. Two for two, three ribbies. What's up, Roach? And then Connor Culverson gets himself an RBI knock as Granite Bay starts the 2024 season on a hot note. A five-inning run rule victory. Is a section three-peat in the cards for the Grizzlies? Stay tuned to find out. Well, that'll put a bow on another episode of Premier Preps. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to watch the show. A special thank you goes out to Ella Scanars of Vista Del Lago High School for being a special guest here this week. And a special shout out goes out to Matthew Bissett of ABC Jam Productions for lending us some championship video this week. Folks, if you don't already subscribe to ABC Jam Productions through the NFHS network, you are missing out. Matthew does a phenomenal job of bringing live stream video to life with outstanding broadcast coverage throughout the Sac Joaquin section and really all of Northern California. So please consider subscribing to ABC Jam Productions. You can do that in the link in the description section of this video. I promise you will not be disappointed. And as for us here at Premier Preps, I'm Nick Pecorero. Thank you so much for tuning in. We've got another great show for you lined up next week with spring sports coverage as well as state basketball championship coverage. Until then, we'll see you next time.